What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Power Stroke Tech Talk podcast. This is podcast number 11. We got a couple of new guests with us. We got uh, Ryan on our top left. We have Jerry. He's a subscriber out in New York. North and Carolina. North Carolina. And we got Damn. Mr. Matt, uh, Sean Diaz. He's out there. Mr. Poe, I'm here, Mr. Poe. He's sleeping. So we want to let him know right off the rip he's oh missed because we're going to roast him. Um, but uh, we're going to start off <clears throat> talking to Jerry. Um, uh, I've known him for a couple of years now, just going back and forth with the channel and uh, questions he's had, uh, you know, about his truck and, and some things that he was going to get done. And, um, you know, why don't you tell us, um, you know, what, what year your truck is, what you got done to it, what color is, because not everybody knows, you know, the things that, uh, you know, I've, uh, we've talked about and, um, you know, kind of let you go at it. an 0, 016 Super Duty 350 uh, Platinum, the Ruby Red. And I haven't really done anything except for change the air cleaner. I do my own, own oil changes, stuff like that. When, when you say air I, cleaner, what do you mean? Uh, uh, what is it, performance one? Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And that's it. I, got like I was afraid if you go too technical, I didn't want to do that delete stuff because then you end up with issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Is it, um, what do you got, long wheel base? Uh, short, oh, eight short, foot dead, long Oh, eight foot, okay, okay. Cool grab. Crew cab? Crew cab? Yeah, crew cab. Okay. Ooh, okay. That's a big girl. Big one. Oh, yeah. She's a big she's girl. She's a pain in the ass to park. Oh, yeah. Okay. How many, how many miles? Uh, I got 110. Got? I just did the oh, oil shoot. change in the fuel filter. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's then not... I greased the front bearing or the axle shafts. Front wheels, like you were saying. Yeah. Yep. Last yep. week on your podcast. Yep. Excellent. What, uh, what, um, well, that's what I was going to ask you, because I've been using the Rotelli. I used to use the Ford, the full synthetic, but Matt kept on saying he doesn't care for the full synthetic. Well, no, it's not that I don't care for it. I just, I can't justify spending the extra money because oh, I'm cheap. Okay. I mean, uh, look at it through my eyes, okay? So uh, you're a fireman. You don't work on cars. All you do is you, you do fire fire safety, and you're fire, fire, fire. You don't know nothing about cars. I get right. gentlemen who, who do who do nothing about landscaping. I got gentlemen who do nothing about carpentry and do nothing about vehicles. So with that said, now for me and my, my everyday and how I'm going to take care of my truck, it's like w the convenience I have to change the oil and the ease of me getting the materials for as easy and convenient as I can get 1030 and how often I can change it. It's like, why would I want to spend 540 money? and change it it's not that i'm not going to change it any less often i'm going to continue to change it every you know five thousand miles it's not like i'm going to be waiting until 10 so it's like like matt's saying i can't justify the money and i agree with him that it's like i guess you have to depend on what you're trying to do do you want do you not care about the monetary value and you're going to buy a full synthetic and be okay with you know the hundred and sixty dollar oil change or one hundred and eight dollar oil change every time. Well, that's why I do my own after going to the dealership. What they get you for that? I know, I know, I know, and and I, I get it. I just uh, I just I just changed Ryan's oil uh, not too long ago, and and he's running um, a six two, but was still using full synthetic. But I mean. I guess they can't really compare those because we got, you know, way more oil capacity, you know, comparing, you know, our trucks to, to his, but um, I mean, I guess it just depends on, on preference and, you know, like Sean was saying, um, you know, with his, his uh, lawn equipment and his reliability he's had. And I guess, the provenness if you want to call it a word with what he's seen with using full synthetic then i guess he's got his own data to back that up and is only going to have uh a data to back up when he does it with the truck because i don't know if he's going to go full synthetic with his truck or if he's going to go 10 30. we're going to really find out because i know it's something he's getting very close to i think it's at 20 percent 
I don't know if he's going to have me do it or if he's going to do it. Um, um, I have not made uh, an announcement. Uh, I need to get it on Instagram uh, starting uh, or Facebook starting the first of the year. Uh, I'm going to have a uh, oil change deal for first time, um, not owners, but your first maintenance and people who are going to come uh, to visit me. Uh, oil change we're going to do um, for $99.95 and a uh, full synthetic for 175. So I mean, you're getting it done, getting it done by me. You're using, you know, motorcraft stuff. It's something, um, well, you know, I we do talk- use the motorcraft fuel, uh, oil filter now. Yeah, yeah, and definitely fuel filters too. Definitely fuel filters. Don't That's be the using- fuel filters too. Yeah, definitely don't be using the Wix. Wix no, I don't touch um, the Wix. Nah, no way, no way. I think, I don't know, Matt, have you ever seen um filters come by themselves like for a six seven or even for a six liter or have they like all in, in, mine always came in a pack filter two. yeah always been together no i've never been able to get it i i i'm sure you could maybe get it individually by ford but it also it always seems like it comes as a cell kit because it's like obviously right now we're having quality issues with the uh the secondary filter on six seven specifically the aluminum trucks where you know it'll crack and then it spews fuel everywhere well that's what happened to um, me last year when i called aid rod to ask i thought i blew something else yeah so it'd be nice if we could get just that filter especially like we've had vehicles where we just did filters on it and a month later it's spewing fuel so it's not like you know someone tried to beat it down in that housing with a hammer or something but It'd be nice speaking, if we could get just one filter. Speaking of fuel and spewing and, and that that um, whole area right there, if they're going to have an 11 through 16 repair kit for the return valve, FOMOCO, why can't you just make one for the 17 to current model year? They got one in the aftermarket. That's cool. That's fine. But it's I, I need... I need a motorcraft number now. I need to be able to get that at a supplier. I need to be able to go to our, our local depot and pick something up to get this truck back on the road because now I'm stuck. I have to I have unnecessary repair with repa- replacing the whole entire return line. I'm draining coolant. I'm taking intakes off. I'm taking unnes- I'm taking stuff off that doesn't need to be taken off. And I feel that if you could implement um, something into the catalog to help with this obvious need because you have two callouts for a nine baker 246 for a fuel contamination kit and this fuel repair kit that's like twenty dollars charge me fifty dollars i don't care i would rather pay the fifty dollars than having to pay how much is the repair going to be for the return line and all that labor oh, yeah couple grand you, uh, maybe i mean you don't just come on you don't just get a return line and take the old one out and we don't we don't have those you can't get those. no like like you order a return line right and then you just pull the fitting out you could but i mean i gotta debate no i own. i agree i don't like charging a customer for a reach i we give I'll them the, give them the cho- yeah i'll give them the choice i say if look you want this I, new can, line? I can charge you an exuberant amount of money to put the return line on i get it totally definitely or you can basically just pay for the part and i'll just take the fitting off and put it on and we're not going to charge you <laughs> labor for it i could totally feel you i could totally feel you because that's I mean, just that's, i think 99.9 percent of those failures are uh, self-inflicted by the operator <laughs> i can say that i think i've probably done one not an Illuma duty. But I was just, I don't know what I was doing. If I was trying to take the CAC tube off and it like popped out of my hand or something. And I was, oh, no. I mean, but my point being is, is that fitting doesn't just break on its own going down the road. No. No. You either yanked on that too hard. You didn't realize or you, you didn't figure out how to pull the tabs off, so you just kept yanking and you snapped the, the nipple off inside the hose. No way, Jose. You uh, you filled 
you filled your tank with death and then it crystallized and the line exploded. I just finished my transit time. today. I just finished it. It fired up. Woohoo! Woohoo! I was excited. I thought yeah, about you well, when I was driving away. I wish I could say the same with some of the jobs I've been working on because it's like, oh, it needs this uh this oil cooler outlet hose, right? That goes from the cooler up to the uh lower radiator hose. When can, when can we get that? Oh, January? Okay, well, we're putting oil in it and I'm driving it into its grave for <laughs> a couple of weeks until we can get that hose. <laughs> uh, I tell you, what's what, um, out of your ownership, you bought your truck brand new, Jerry, right? Obviously. Yeah. Um, out of uh, the time you've had your truck, what has been your major's repair? Uh Every now and then the engine light will come on and it'll say the, what is it, right front fuel rail or something. I can't remember exactly. But then time I get to the dealership, the code disappears. And then the dealership says, we can't do nothing because the code has to be there before we do anything. And then maybe six months later, it comes on again. Time I get down there, she disappears again on me. But yet on my cluster where it has the memory and all that, it says you have a, a warning. And I figure the truck would save it, but it doesn't. They said they can't find nothing. Like an orange warning? No, or it's a an... uh, yellow light. Or yeah, it might even be orange. Okay, okay. Orange or orange is yellow or something like that. Weird. It's not a red one. Do, do you have like any drivability concerns at all with it? Or it's just the light goes on Sometimes and it goes she off? <laughs> hesitates a little bit, but other than that, she runs fine. And I have no really issues. <laughs> I'm just a concern to make sure nothing else happens later on down the road. That's a big piece of uh, merchandise that's sitting out there. I mean, I have for, theories whenever a code like that happens. For it to go on and off is kind of suspicious. That's suspicious just for the fact that it's not going to fix itself so do we have like a circuit problem do we have like a pin fit issue i mean i don't really have like hands down besides the battery light i don't really have chafe problems um oh, i definitely did what you on said the that one video i went underneath the truck i checked all the connectors like yep. you were showing just to make sure there was no green no nothing yeah it's kind of weird i guess you could hypothesize but like Matt no, said, I, I mean, I agree. It's weird, but I have thoughts because if it's the code that I'm thinking it is, that's a tail chaser. What do you mean, tail chaser? Uh, it's like you were saying, you bring it in and it doesn't do it, it doesn't act up. You can try right. to duplicate it. Um, yeah, because she spent a week at the dealership, them trying to duplicate it and it couldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, I've also had vehicles that I'll work on and, um, you know, well, like you were saying, we'll have it for a week. The second we give it back to the customer, it does it and they go to pull it in the door and it stops doing it. It's like, okay, well, what's, what's going on here? Yeah, it uh, those definitely are a pain in the butt. It seems like every time you have a concern, <laughs> I swear, you go for a ride. They was just doing it on the way here. Well, I even took a picture because I have one of those little scan tools that you plug into the thing. And yeah, show yeah. It. yeah, but she goes, we can't go by that. We have what, to see the code. What What was the code? Do you remember the number? Fuel rail one, I think it was. Fuel rail one. Or fuel bank one. I can't remember how it said it. P0191, P0170. I'm not sure because I know it was last year when I sent you the picture of it. Hold on, let me get my work phone. Cause that's worth talking. I bet I don't delete my, my text messages here. So let's go. I'm going to go. Oh, oh, he's got two phones. I got a bad phone. I guess I did delete it. Um, I saved it. Was it yeah. like a fuel, fuel rail pressure? Code? I don't remember. Cause like that one good. I mean, there's too many things, especially if it's V ref related with that. Okay, so I got a good question um, from Adam Watts seven two five on Instagram. He says, "What else do you recommend? 
what else do you recommend doing while the upper oil pan is removed? This is referencing my uh, rear crank seal video that just went up uh, today on the 29th of uh, December. Uh, I noticed a little oil on the front driver's side of the upper oil pan, uh, no drips yet. He says he's at 81,000 miles, 2017 F-250. You don't happen to know any good diesel mechanics down here in Louisiana, do you? Thanks, buddy. I don't. I apologize. <clears throat> um, you know, just as you saw in the video, um, I know Matt, he's done countless, probably was doing one today. Um, How'd you know? Got another one lined up for tomorrow. <laughs> It's just really all uh, visual inspection and, and pretty much, you know, you address it as, as you see fit. And um, uh, unfortunately, I did not go into this job planning on to do uh, a crank seal. Uh, I noticed it and immediately, as soon as I got the trans out, I had to assess that situation, get on the horn with my parts guy. Let me get a crank seal coming. If we didn't have it, uh, see if we can pick that up locally so I can continue to get this, you know, thing going because um, I had a commitment to make at the end of the week. Um, so it's just really, you know, inspect your truck prep work, uh, is going to be the number one, um, uh, in, in making I mean, sure if I was in there on a, on an oil pan, I would probably give it a little bit of secret sauce. Like I've showed you, it's like five minutes extra of work, but, um, I mean, maybe I'll divulge into what that secret secret sauce is. We'll have to. Uh, why don't you reach out to Matt? Maybe he'll I found divulge that into a secret. The one I sent you, a rod. Did you? Yeah, it says fuel trim bank one. Oh, P0170. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. So that's a that. Uh, I think I got a video on that. Um. Um. What did I do for that? If you did, I must have missed. Probably it. air filter. No, let me look here. I believe I want to say 170. That's the first thing to do with the 170 is see if your filters all. The trucks are just too finicky with airflow. Oh, so there's actually a reprogram for that, Jerry. Yeah, you did say something, but when I went there, they said they said we can't do nothing without the code showing. Oh, uh, bull honky. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I guess it would, if you came to me and said you kept getting this code and you explained to me to the situation that, you know, this, you know, you've cleared it and this kept coming back and coming back. I mean, you're here for a reason. How you know what I mean? You want to give I me just, your money. I just, uh, yeah, I, what's the big deal? Because I don't have a problem paying for it as long no. as I just get it done. So I don't have to worry about it again. You don't have any extended oh. service plan, do you? No. Okay, so this would be on you, and uh, right. in, in my eyes, that would be an hour's worth of labor. My hourly rate uh, is uh, uh, at 130 an hour. Uh, that's going to be from 100 to 130 is going to be like the going rate. Well, I just um, wish you lived closer to North Carolina. <laughs> um, um, drive up and see me. I got somebody coming from Colorado to come and see me, so I'll uh, – um, uh, oh, video was two years ago, May 25th, 2018. Thank you. The uh, is Ryan playing like producer? Oh, yeah, he's playing sidelines. He is, he is. He's texting, <laughs> he's like, Aaron, shift your focus. You're um, rambling. Uh, it's just going to be probably doing a PCM. Now, if your truck's never been updated, you're probably going to have no, this big multi coordinated <laughs> flash. It's going to be like the PCM, TCM, glow plug module, probably both Knox modules. It's probably going to be like, no bullshit, like five or six modules going to be reprogrammed. And I mean, it'll take, you know, probably 40, 35, 40 minutes to go through and, you know, do all that. But um, there is a bulletin for... Um, I haven't got it then. I wonder, uh, let's see here. Because you said Turn yours was... Turn key a, on. Turn key off. Turn you said yours was a 2016, right? Right. 2016, 350. I'm going to pull this out of here. I don't... I don't remember what else. So you can Was send that the, to my email. That way I can just go to dealership and say, hey, listen, this is what I see. Can you help me? Yeah. So this is, I'm going to see if I can screen share this so you can see what I'm talking about. 
So I'm going to get this pulled up and you should be able to see that right now. Do you see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it says <clears throat> um, some 2015, 16 super duties equipped with six, seven may have a check engine light with this DTC and a couple other codes. Um, oh yeah. I see the other ones. Okay. Yep. And it may be due to different strategies within the PCM, which is within the software and ones and zeros and stuff that we're not going to uh, equate to. So really what all you're going to do is you're going to reprogram the PCM. It says just the PCM, but you're not really going to be doing the PCM. In my opinion, for a truck that's never been updated, you're probably going to have, like I said, glow plug, Knox modules, TCM, PCM. There's going to be like five or six of them. Okay. And then there's one more service procedure it does down here um, is to do a math parameter reset. But, you know, like Matt was explaining, you're going to have to look at the truck and see and, and judge it and how it's being used. I mean, if it looks like it's not being taken care of, well, I mean, yeah, look at the air filter. But oh, no, you, my truck. you're on it up on the, you, that's not a question. You know, it's, yeah. you know what I mean? So definitely um, take note. It's a TSB. You got, you can see it up here at the top, 19-2131. Uh, um, it's a bulletin that we all can pull up. Um, Ford is going to pay us four tenths of an hour. So they're going to pay us 24 minutes to uh, uh, do this whole thing. And I mean, I can't see them charging you, you know, an, an absurd amount of money to, to, you know, uh, initiate that. So um, definitely probably take care of your check engine light. I would definitely see a P0170 coming and going totally okay. could. 100 so nothing that's going to screw me no words. no no i wouldn't be seeing okay. you putting into d rate or limp mode either so <clears throat> no i never had to do that yet i've done a bunch of them i've done i've done quite a few of them i think the one um that i was actually um talking about was a 16 350 world. dually that i actually had to replace the uh exhaust brake button i never had a code for the exhaust brake button so that was um uh, a video that i felt i needed to make i'll maybe put a link i'll write that down i'll put a link about that in the description uh that video um now is there something they also can program to the truck so after she does her burn or clean mode to let me know when she's done is there anything like that that could be done well i know the newer ones you can do that the only thing that they'll be able to do is turn on ocr but i mean that's something they should absolutely i just have. gotta take a guess 35 45 minutes you drive it just to make sure she does the whole burn so when you go there tell them you want to get your pcm reprogrammed per this TSB and can you turn on my OCR, my OCR. operator commanded region. And, and I have a video for that. I have, I don't, I can't believe how many times I have heard from people out there in TV land. They've been into the dealer. They asked for OCR and they Ooh. don't know what they're talking about. I, what in the world? I would just think that they would know. And I guess knowing it's half the battle, but I just would think that somebody who's using IDS and is working on these trucks and FDRS, you would know what OCR is and what that's all about. I so. sometimes <laughs> wonder if it's just techs being lazy or they've never really? done it before. So they think they're going to screw <clears throat> something up. Yeah, I guess I could see that. I guess I could see that. But stand fast and be firm and tell them that you can do it. It's with IDS. It's not a big deal. If they have a problem, give them the link and tell them watch this video. It's very simple. I go through and tell you exactly how to do it. They're using the same scan tool I'm going to use. Um, and maybe they'll do it for you in that hour's worth of charge. If they're going to charge another hour of labor to do five... Um, it is what it is. It's just... I uh, mean, I oh, that's probably... fine. I don't have a problem with that. I just want to make sure... It gets done yeah. that way. I don't have to worry about no issues. Yep. Yep. OCR is, is what I call it. If somebody, if, OCR. Uh, okay, yep, an advisor comes up to me and says, Hey, this guy wants to get OCR turned on. I mean, we all are on the same page. I know what they're talking about. So just, Oh, can I get my operator commanded region? What? What, what, are, you, what are you talking about? 
you know, it's, I don't know. We, I know what you guys are talking about. So, okay. Um, yeah, I can't, I up. log on to PTS. What's the dealio? Dude, I don't know. It doesn't want to work for me. When yeah. I get to Faust, it, it gives me a million different <laughs> logon options for oh, some reason. And I don't yeah. understand why. I my okay, you know what? I, I found this. Go to www.fordtechservice.dealerconnection.com and then go and do your stuff. So you're saying Ford Tech Service. Tech service dot dealer connection. Okay, yeah. That's literally what I did. Close and, out of that browser. And, hold, hold on. on. Hold on. <gasps> I'm on. I told you there's something, something's weird and I found it working. So I bookmarked that and now I don't have to worry about it no more. I don't know what the deal is. Have you ever used uh, the lens? Oh yeah. The what? Do you know what the lens is? No. I thought you were going to say PTS mobile when you grabbed your phone. No. So there is this thing. It's called the lens. And it's basically like global. Don't use, don't use those bedroom eyes with me. It's like using report a concern, but direct. So a bunch it's of calls are like. Lens? Yeah. So I don't where, know. Where do you go? To show, I'm not sure if I'm well, supposed just to where, show where, this where, or not. Where the heck do you go? Um, I can get you the website. Well, I'll have to email it to you. Yeah, but text for, it to me. What? I've never heard of that Regardless, <clears throat> it lets you. So you take a shot of the VIN, location of the concern, a close-up shot, and then three-quarter shot of the vehicle and anything else. Get it out it gets of here. relayed to engineering like immediately. Interesting. Oh, wow. So if they're getting like a bunch of shots of like the same thing, they can, you know, pull Fix something it now. and be like, yeah. That's a really you know, good job, whoever implemented that. Well, I like on. that. I There's like that. There's a bunch of guys getting all upset because they're like, well... Ford needs to pay me for that. Yeah. I, okay. You okay. Want, we can do. Okay. We can do recalls okay. that. We can do recalls okay. that pay really bad instead. Okay. Okay. I could see that. Well, you know what? I think that's fine and dandy. Then maybe what should that be left up to the service advisor to do then? Yeah, but it's like, dude, it's gonna take two minutes out of your day. Or then Ford's going to have to give the dealer some sort of a fuck, uh, an allowance every month. Oh, yeah, like like a things. kickback or do your, do your thing where like you give us, you know, our little Ford Visa cards. You toss money on it every time. I can dig that. I can dig that. What happened to those? I, you know, that's so funny. I wonder, let me go back to PTS and see if I can find this. Because I reached out and I emailed the dude or whoever. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? You got me thinking about P zero one seventies now. Where is it? This new, um, uh, thingy. You can like join A thingy. Uh, oh yeah, there, register for the new technician loyalty program. I tried registering. <clears throat> oh, it's the, it's like the same idea. Yeah, and it Isn't said it? my it said my uh my star's ID was not illegible. I uh, like what? Um, what? I don't you're know. Probably you're you're you've been in the game too long. No, come on, come on. What was it? You know what got me, and it made me laugh pretty good when they made the videos on how to like diagnose knocks and death codes. Oh, oh I seen that. I saw because <laughs> it was literally, guys. I hate to make fun of you right now. It literally was a video of the pinpoint test. That's literally what it was. And then everyone's like, "Oh wow, this is so helpful." <laughs> this is so helpful. It was literally pinpoint test RD. They showed you how to take a death injector out and check the dosing like you're supposed to. And that's very helpful. I'm angry. Yes, you can. With okay, hold on. Scan. New technician loyalty program. Yeah, and I tried, emptied all my credentials and <clears throat> it wouldn't. Uh, hey, Rye, can you reach down there and give me uh, one of those Pellegrinos? When did, you, when did you try to register? Oh, like a couple weeks ago. 
couple well, three it's weeks said ago. You had to register by November 30th to receive a enrollment bonus. No, it was way before that. I'm not a couple three weeks ago. Like, oh yeah, because they're doing gift cards and stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think the way they do some of that stuff's a little silly. Like, I don't really just because you have a certification doesn't mean you know it. True that. Okay, back. Where was I? You guys babble. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna p zero one seven and get up right now. I like this comment. He's like Chad Harmon's comments on this. Uh, my last video. He's like, "There's some things you can't do in your driveway, boys and girls. LOL. Take it to the professionals." And that's right, because sometimes, well, I know for me, you ain't gonna catch me pulling no six seven trans on my back in a driveway. Uh uh. No way. I mean, hold on. If, if the money's right, I guess so. But not right off the rip. And anybody out there pulling them transits out, you know what I'm talking about. Don't you love the satisfaction of getting one of those things to just line right up first try? Like you don't have to adjust the trans jack or anything. It just goes right in. I know. What do you guys use for a trans jack over there? Um, because you've you've seen the shots of the ones that I use, right? Yeah, that's a I think Norco, and they have a six R one forty adapter for it, so you don't have to throw a strap. I mean, okay, you probably should throw a strap over it. I never do. Oh, uh, you put like a ratchet strap. I this thing holds the trans so well. Oh. There was a chain um attached to it I, I just i don't like how the chain is uh, like uh, i like how the the strap lays across the webbing instead of you know the chain kind of like buckling as you're i mean i, I don't i, don't I like probably that. should put something over the top of it i don't but i well, just i just thought of this how many transmissions have you removed and you look at the top bolt hole not the one that goes for the fuel line bracket. And it's got the steel wire on it from the tag, right? And it's made an imprint on the rear cover and on the face of the bell housing. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, this is on a what? On a 6R140. You pull the trans out, right? Okay. And let's say at like the, ooh, I don't know, probably like the one o'clock position that bell housing bolt they'll use a wire tag like a tag that's affixed with like mechanics wire right okay have you ever noticed that it'll they they won't take the they won't take it off and then it leaves an imprint on the trans and on the rear cover i think so so if you haven't You'll notice every single one of them has it. You know, I wondered is, you know, that sticker on the front of the vacuum pumps. That's like four, one, two, four, six, oh, that's, zero. That's the engine code. Wait, no, it's not. It's like, I, I don't know what these numbers mean. Is it like an inspector? Like, Dude, the I, didn't what, your, I, didn't, like I didn't know what KTP only meant until a couple <laughs> weeks ago. You're like, oh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, yeah, because like I think that's in one of these where I'm like, what? I know, I know. Guys, I know. what's KTP? And then I finally thought that about it. That is so funny. KTP only because the truck plant doesn't put the fan. They don't put the the cooling fans on. <laughs> they do that in final assembly. And yeah. then I'm like, that's why. That's because so they're funny. not gonna they're not gonna put the the cooling fans on. Are they made in? Are they? Are the engines still made in Mexico? Oh uh, yeah, and I can't s pronounce it. What? Ch Ch Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Yeah, in Chihuahua. So then I'm like, why does it say KTP only? And then I really thought about it. I'm like, oh my god, that's why. This guy is a goofball. Sorry, pal. Sometimes I wonder. Who's a goofball? Your buddy Ryan being a silent Sally down there? No, he's not being a silent <laughs> Sally. He's just uh, <clears throat> generally observing. Got his first get up here with the uh, with all the podcast and uh, got his mic and the headphones and whatnot. So 
I think I might. Yeah, I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think I should do with the space? And I I will give you a hint of something that I think I want one of those mic stands so that I want to purchase. Well, can you get one for your mic? How does pull the thing closer? How does your mic actually go in there? Like is it just sliding in there or what? Uh it's basically just held in by tension, but there's different Oh, okay. So like a little it's clamp. Just, it's yeah, it's specific to your mic. Mm. So like there's kind of a detent. And then it just clamps onto my desk. Uh, well, no, like how does the actual mic go in? In like, oh, shit. Dang. Okay, okay, okay. A little, a little something like that. Okay, okay, okay. I can order you one. Dang, Dang dude, he is your manager. You're like, hey, right, Mike. I- I've got one coming, so I can get another one. I'll, put, got, I'll, I'll change it to two. I got one. I got one coming. Well, th- you might just want to get a nice. I know y- Yeti. Y- Yeti makes the Yeti Caster USB style mic. So, like this is, this mic needs to get powered. So it gets forty-eight volts from my sound card, right? And none of this makes sense to any of you, but that's just how it works, right? Um, but there's there's a whole slew of things of audio quality and why you would why you would go with that. But anyways, I'm going on a tangent. Can we talk about something? Else? Let's talk about my space here. So I, I kind of want some people's input for design here. And this is where you guys converse while I'm looking it up. I was looking at that Samsung S21 and no, the Note and. Dang, Should I put that I on the wall? Want I'm that. putting that on the wall. <sighs> That's pretty dope. Hey, can you get me one of those Pellegrinos down there, Rye? Just reach down there. Can you get me one? I'd appreciate that. Thank you. I'm thirsty now. Um, I want that sign. I don't know, Rye. Tell us what 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 do you what, what kind of trucks you got? For, I mean, I I know, but everybody out there doesn't know what what kind of trucks you're rolling with. I heard I something you, about a he's got a, three maybe. He, he's got a couple of them. I've got a 2007 three regular cab. It's got like 278,000 on it. Damn. Is the body look the body looks like it's got about a half a mil. Body looks like it got <laughs> half a what? mil. It's it's had uh, I put new doors, <laughs> new bed, you name it, and that stuff's already starting to rot out again. So for sale, email for sale, email currently, me. yes, get a hold of a rod. Um, I got a, a twenty, 20 bucks. <laughs> I got a twenty eleven F two fifty six two, like one hundred and twenty thousand. It's been pretty good, no issues really whatsoever. I think we did maybe a AC compressor in it, and that's that's about the extent of it. Plugs, wires, trans service, yeah. diffs, T case. Yeah, just you know, basic maintenance stuff. You know. Um, then I've got a 2019 F two fifty six two. Just got that about a year and a half ago. No problems. Love it. We'll link his video in the description for the uh, which actually is doing pretty well, by the way. Um, we took his incandescent headlights out and put led lights in and we did not get the one with the switch back resistors we used uh the scan tool uh not for scan but i used ids to configure the bcm for the lighting outage uh configuration so that it would not do that hyper flash and you know be you know kind of an annoyance so um yeah we'll make sure to to link that but um definitely definitely worth the super duties um definitely a variety i mean going back from 2000 to an 11 to a 19 i know i was coming from a 98 f-150 to a 2020 uh super duty my 98 f-150 was a, a 4.2 five speed four by two so when I first got my truck, I'd be pulling up to the light jerry and pull oh my i want to put this i'm putting my clutch in like i don't even have a clutch it's just that that memory of it was it was a little hard to break uh, break away even even turning the key off because I don't have my push button, so I'd you know pull up to the driveway and put it in park and go to turn the key off and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, I don't. know. What did you have prior to you having the sixteen? Did you have another Super Duty? 
I had an 013. Oh. I had an 08, an oh. 05. An 08? Come yeah, on. It was a piece of crap I owned. Hold on. Please tell hold me on. you didn't. Hold on. Please tell me you didn't have that hold 213. On. Yeah, I was going to say, I want to know no, why. She died in 10. Okay, so what did you have that between sounds... 10 and 13? She probably bought a Dodge. <laughs> no, I won't drive a Dodge. I had a Dodge when I first. Interesting. The 80s. And every time we went to the dealership, ah, it's this. Well, Ford has this in it. That's why it's better than your Dodge. I'm like, I don't want to hear that. I just want you to fix the truck. So WTF. Always the excuse that Ford was always better. I said, well, then I should have bought one. WTF. Yep. And then after that, that's when I went to Ford's after that since 96 on. What's up with that? What was up with that 6.4? Uh, besides oh, it being it a pile. It breaking down. Those CO sensors. Uh, then it was the... Uh, Oh, what was, was the, the back rockers. of the motor? Something blue. It was a oh, something blue. Fix. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what it was, and I was so pissed. How many miles did you have on that turd? Sixty-two, I think. Now, now you can understand those trucks getting a bad rap. Six yes. fours, garbage, garbage, garbage. But you gotta admit, going from your thirteen to your sixteen, and now you see now my my twenty. I mean, you can't really say the Super Duty's got a bad name. That's six oh, four. No, no, no. I that would six, never four. say that. That's six no. four. That truck, and that's why I just moved on. To that's the next six one. four. It's so funny that we're just talking about six fours because I just was reaching out to PowerStrokeHelp.com. Old Bill Hewitt down in Georgia, still waiting to hear back from him. Um, I, I, I don't think he his, likes six fours either. I, I he doesn't, and and I had never. I called. have seen a video of him like screaming, like "Get this thing out of here!" <laughs> you get an, a a pre recorded um voicemail when you call and he's like you know thanks for calling powerstrokehelp.com you know the only place for the the one and only dealer proof da 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 and uh goes through dealer proof if you have if you if you if you own an 08 to 2010 uh model super duty with a 64 oh uh, we don't work on them anymore I, i'm just sorry but you know i think it's time for you to just turn that truck in <laughs> i was just about laughing on the phone because i thought that was for one the most correct statement that you can possibly make and it's just so funny it's like man uh, uh, matt i we we can't do that i mean i wish no. we had that luxury but it's every six four no, comes in, we're like oh yeah. no Another i mean my one. my co-workers will push them off they'll push them off on me because <laughs> they're like no dude we we dealt with that when those things no. came out you can work on it no. i actually ran into the guy who bought my 08 Oh no! And I was shocked to see it, the condition it was in compared to how I had it. Like I said, my trucks are very clean. There wasn't a spot that didn't have a dent, a scratch. How many miles do you think it was? Window. How many miles were on it? Do you think you had when you got rid of it? I got rid of it. I think when she had sixty-two on it. Oh well, good. You got rid of it early. Mm -mm -mm. Those those weren't from him, uh, like running into things. That was him with a hammer. Because <laughs> he had this steaming pile of six four that he that he had. If I think back, my most hated. Um, the only thing that was good about those is that they still had what the six speed in them. Oh yeah, it was a torque shift. Well, no, 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 no. The ZF that you could get with them, the manual oh, trans. Was that a five yeah, speed? No, no, that was a six speed. Yeah, I had. That was the only. That was the only cool thing about them. You know what? That's funny you say about the manual because next time you're in a, a, a wiring diagram for a six seven, it says like you go through the pages and it'll say manual trans or a a, a, new, a, a neutral safety switch, and I'm like, uh, what, did they make I, a manual trans six seven? Because I know I ain't never what, seen one. What year were you looking at? Oh, uh, I don't, because right there. I want us when I looked. Let me look at Jerry. So I'm doing 16 F350. I would look at. Something. I got like in depth looking, but I think it was South American markets only. Really? All right, I'm going through here. I'm going through electronic engine controls. Let's uh, let's pull this down here and let's see if you guys can see if we can find this together. Sure. What are we going under? I am at a 16 F350. You guys see that? I don't think it's going to show. It shows. Let's Is it showing? Which, can you see that, Jerry? Cell. Yeah, I can see the diagram. Can you? Okay, I'm going to go to the next page. Tell me if you see it move, Jerry. 
Knox. Yep. Oh, excellent. Okay, so I'm looking yeah. for something that is uh, going to be like neutral safety switch. I think you have to go back to like 11 or 13 for it. You think so? Yeah. Not neutral safety switch, but. Dude, just... here's my. Okay, go go to. Go to go to cell six, right? Go to page six. Six? No, you were just on it. Oh, or... I'm, I thought you were talking about something else. Go no, cell six. twenty, cell twenty-seven, page six. Oh no, we're gonna need a we're gonna need a different year. Why in the hell? What if I went? Why to... in the hell? Were EGT three and four switched on cabin chassis? For what? I have no idea. Well, twelve and thirteen, right? Okay, so yeah, that's correct. But when you look at IDS, and you're looking at one two and one three, is the one three sensor really one three? No, that's no, that's what I'm saying. Like, which is which? And why they, didn't they just change it in the programming? Any why engineer out change, there? Why didn't that, they just change the pinout? That's I've never understood this. Let's see, where are we here? Narrow I don't know. Frame. I with fifth. I'm pretty blue. sure it was a South American market thing. You think so? Like I'm almost confident because I remember reading about it somewhere. Reverse lamp switch coming from the PCM. Close with vehicle in reverse. Yeah, it's oh, it says right there, manual transmission. Well, I didn't even see that. Duh, right here in the top. Look at that. So a 16 F350. They're saying right here, what's the page before this? It says wide frame, narrow frame. Fifth wheel, trailer tow, trailer tow. Cab chassis. And then you go to this next page, page four. Come on. I hate when that happens. I'm going to find it. Page four, manual transmission. That's so weird. Auto to manual, auto to manual, auto to manual. So weird. If I ever saw a manual trans six, seven come in, oh my gosh, I'm going to steal that truck and make like an hour an hour show we're just going to talk about it because that's something I, it's like a unicorn i'm pretty sure i drove a stick sport track once and i thought that was cool and i'm like what i'm pretty sure i saw something about it being in the europe or in the south american market once Matt Matt's gonna look that up, I something I wanna I wanna touch on find it. And, and talk about. Uh, I'm gonna definitely be making a video about it. I haven't said anything on the social media. I haven't taken any pictures. Is my 2020s got an oil leak? Really? Yeah. And I'm kind of bummed. I'm kind of over it. I don't want to fix it. I mean, I do, but I like, I personally don't like, I don't freaking want to take the trans out. Oh, come on. You, sissy. I do, but I don't, I mean, I don't want to take the 10 speed out. I, do, I mean, it's a learning <laughs> experience. I just, you got these cool. Yeah. Cause once, all this once you know how to do it, then you're the guy to do it. Uh, but now, are you allowed to work on your vehicle at your shop at all or no? I mean, yeah. Do they let I, you? Okay. I don't Define see why I wouldn't be allowed. Yeah, I'm like, are we allowed to perform warranty repairs on our own vehicles? No, no, I'm saying on your own time, come in there and service oh. your own vehicle. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Most, most okay. stores, it's, um, it's up to them. But like right now with COVID going on and other environmental factors for us, um, I have to get prior approval. But most of the time, it's it's a yes. I obviously can't be, you know, making money on the side doing it. It's just personal stuff. Or my dad's like, hey, can you change the oil on my Tahoe for me? I'm like, yeah, but you should have bought an Expedition. 
<laughs> oh, why don't you go see my buddy uh, Joe here in the uh, showroom? <laughs> no, we we tried. He loves his Tahoe. He likes that he can pull his seats all the way out, and that the, oh. you know, the second row flips forward. Well, and it's for the dogs. No one else. It's for you the may, dogs. You may have already said this. What year is that thing? What? What year is this Tahoe? Oh, it's a twelve. Oh, shit. what motor he it, got in that? I don't know. Probably five three. Okay, okay, okay. What color he got? You know, he got the five spoke wheels. Dang, he got all LT, black. LTZ. No, L Chrome. He got the LT. Okay, okay, okay. I got LT too, man. That's cool. That's cool. But it's it's literally the one Tahoe that you could not pick up out of a lineup because every every Tahoe from like oh seven and a half to what twenty thirteen when they changed the body style, they're all LTs and whatever agate black or whatever, you know, they're black and they have the five spoke 20 inch aluminum wheels. That's like what I see wanted. those things everywhere. I know. When I was looking for mine, I wanted those wheels so bad. They're like, well, we got these 18s. And I'm like, oh, that blue and green color. Oh, I want it. I'm like, I well, don't want the wheels. They dealer traded one of theirs to get it or they, or I, I don't know what it was. Like we got you, we got you the better wheels, and we looked at it. and We're like, the f- fucker, that's not what we wanted. You guys better figure this out right now. Like, well, we'll give you, we'll give you the wheels off, off that demo right there. They got two hundred miles on it. So do the tires. This Speaking dad, of Tahoe, don't uh, I would much rather change the price. I'd much rather see my duty in here. It won't fit. Oh no, it'll fit. I oh, just, does it? I I just have this reserved spot for this garage queen. I I I don't know. It's it's a car. I don't, it's I'm not getting rid of it. It's you you ha, it's you know what I'm saying. It's I got multiple cars. You just it's dude. I I battle something with, you do. You know what I, I mean? Battle like, with that with my with all the stuff that I own too. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I I'm not a collector. I don't have money to collect cars but the cars i have i mean i'm not just gonna get rid of them just so i can get rid of them like they're my things like you should have your truck sit in the background when you do your podcast uh we'll see now we need to get some more fun so i can blow this wall out (laughs) go a little bit back farther and then then we would i i really need to sell my focus but i want to do fun things with it what donuts? No, like I I want to crack that girl open and throw some forged and turtles <laughs> in it. Donuts? And a bigger turbo. <laughs> and, and ox fuel and everything. I just want to make all the ponies. And I'm like, I should just I should just buy a truck and do it with that instead, because it's way more fun. Ooh. This guy at work's got a Oh, big blocks something. I don't know what it is. He's got an 82, 83 millimeter turbo or something. Something something going to suck the fenders off his car. I don't know. He is going to be silly. But uh, maybe I'll put a link in there. I took a video of that. Maybe pop that in there. Um, what else do we... We didn't touch on last time um, when we were talking with Chad was the LCFs. Ooh, I think I might. I think that thing's going to be rolling in soon. I told him when we slow down, if we slow down, I think I counted today. We currently have 12 school buses scattered across our dealership. Got a lot of those girls right now. Um yeah, dude, we're pretty buried. But, you know. I still got I'm my thinking, school bus. I'm definitely, oh, did you did you tear it down? No, I, I, I had to get my, my superior done. I just got that. It, that's done. So now I have a, a slate to, to tear that down. Which, you no. know, I was just telling my buddy at work. I was like, you know what? And Matt, I was like, you know the other guy on my podcast? I said, he can pull his truck right there in the shop and they can power wash and do whatever. They, I'm like, I want to be able to power wash right in the middle of the shop. Like, well, I mean, I'm over by like the detail side when I do that, but yeah, like the oil pan I just did, 
all I did was spray degreaser on it, push it back so that once I get that hose on it, degreaser it it. or the shampoo. I already used all my shampoo that was allotted per the repair. So, so I if, used degreaser I you, on the frame. I saw you throwing that shit out. What do you use? The TA31? You saw me throw what out? The TA357. Oh, I don't throw that out. That was an empty one. I put the cap back on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was, I was, I was mistaken. Pull those things off and have that Loctite logo. I don't know who's watching these. Ain't nobody watching these. Just us. Just us power stroke folk. We might have an audit. We we might have an audit going on. So we all know three fifty seven ain't good. No, it's junk. I hate it. Yeah, and you know I'm gonna be. I am. I am definitely gonna be getting a hold of engineering. I'm. I'm already talking to a guy. Uh, he. I'm trying to get him on the podcast. He is, uh, the leader, the group, the the head dude for the six seven. Um, and he was highly highly interested in what I had to say, um, regarding, uh, warranty work and stuff that they need to change in the owner's manual regarding frequency your i was change your oil know what you're talking about on that one we need to change that because these warranty claims for 30 and 40 thousand dollars no 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 i hate to see my brand bleed money and for a a verbiage that is in the owner's manual i think needs to be changed and it would be uh for the benefit um uh for i believe all parties because not only is it going to be a learning experience for the customer but everybody who is buying these trucks is going to need to really wake up and understand that these machines are bought designed and shipped with a book no bullshit what's that what what is it probably this thick right Does there in your name? glove box it's called the Does owner's manual it's called the owner's well, manual no 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 it comes in every truck and in there is vital vital information and people forget you want, um you you want a giggle really quick give, give me a giggle um i had a customer argue with me over service intervals and his truck was like a what i think it was a 2014 or whatever he goes no it's not look in the owner's manual i opened his glove box it wasn't out of the cellophane oh <laughs> busted so well, shame on that selling dealer because whoever did that pdi part of the pdi process that you're supposed to check off is to unwrap that owner's manual and do you do the appearance part Uh, i mean not cleaning them but like if it's got loose items that need to be installed i do all the the shelby's and the rs's that's okay that's a little different that's all i would put i'm not putting like bed bed liners in or tonneau covers or well, no, but I'm saying like you, you like detail them. No, no. Oh, no, no. It's a uh... no. Our guy on the lot usually the guy that receives all the vehicles and does. I mean, just short of the loose ship stuff, but like all the owners' manuals and all that stuff, he he gets his hands on all of them. I like that. That's good. So what were we talking right about? There. LCF. Yeah, LCF. They're just <clears throat> maybe, when I, maybe I'll make a video on that one when it comes. They're kind of crappy. That, one, that one's been a mystery for a few places that it's been. So don't don't really get too many of those. It's um kind of a they're just kind of fizzling out. Kind of like kind of how like how the seven threes are fizzling out. It's like you get some seven threes in, you don't really get seven threes in. Some of my I'm sorry, seven threes power strokes, not seven three new ones. 
some of the old 7.3 videos I had that I've made probably three, three and a half years ago. Um, we'll make sure to put a link of those in the description. Um, all my glow plug videos, my IPR videos. I have a playlist that actually has all my 7.3 stuff in it. Those are some of my heavy hitters. Um, every month, people with the views that those get. Um, and it's just funny how popular uh, those older videos are and uh, how m how many of those relics i guess are still out there because i mean for for the time i guess let's just say 2000 to current that's 20 years you would have to say all all these seven threes got to have i don't know how many did you say yours had on it right uh, 250 two, yeah, like 260 270 okay so let's just say 350,000 because maybe some are being worked more hard than the others. Um, I mean, those are fizzling out and people aren't taking those to the dealer to get them fixed. Oh, oh that is not true. Mr. A-Rod some, but some are trying true. to fix it themselves. I so. told you about our million mile customer. I'm Hey, uh, that's one. I'm sure there's you more. Know, he's so happy he got that new truck now. He's like, I didn't realize what I was missing. <laughs> really? Get oh, out yeah. of this dinosaur into this new... Dude, I'm like, the seat frame was worn. Not just the fabric, not just the foam, like the steel frame was worn. Like <laughs> an edge was worn down, like a, you know, like whatever, a door handle that gets used for a, a decade. <laughs> plus 60 said. years like it was worn poor sean i wish he was uh here we could we could razz him we didn't we didn't get to talk about 430 well, you gears. Know, yeah we didn't talk about 430 gears we didn't have to hear a uh an oil spiel um or him which i will off. yeah <laughs> i will set I'll, I'll set the record straight with synthetic like I, I have no problem with it. It's like, you know, A-Rod said, we have 1030 in these massive quantities. So that's what we use. I put that in all my customers' vehicles unless asked otherwise. I've never honestly been asked to put 540 in someone's 67. Why do you and think the transit requires full synthetic? I, it's got to be a clearance thing. You think so? I was like, why can't you just put And I was wondering it? if it has to do with chains versus gears oh yeah I that's, wonder true. that's if true that pressurizes if it has to do anything with pressurization with the tensioners and keeping all of that stuff um carbon free especially all of your like your vcts and everything well those obviously don't have vcts but i'm just thinking broad spectrum yeah, yeah, of, yeah. um things that are overhead cam is just that oil tends to deal with it doesn't coke up as much, I guess you could say, but obviously diesel oil is meant to, you know, deal with um, those issues. It's what well, that's why it turns black. Have you seen the difference of an oil change on a vehicle with or without an EGR on it? Holy smokes. I guess I can't. I mean, I guess I haven't really paid attention. I mean, I know that 2020, I did the fuel filters on. I mean, I didn't change his oil, but I mean, I guess. It'll be much like a, I'd say diesel oil on like a modern day truck now. Probably like 200 miles, it'll be jet black, right? Some of the trucks that are deleted, it'll take them like, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 miles until they start to get dark. Like okay. start to get dark. Wow. Wow. I'll have to pay attention next time I see one come in. Kind All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap this one up. One question, though. Oh, absolutely. You, you were going to yes. do something about as far as maintenance, the steps in maintenance, the grease points and all that. You were going to talk about that. I think you mentioned last week's episode. Um, we, did. we did say we were going to do that. Well, the grease we points, I think, this. yeah, uh, we'll have to write that down. I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on, on your it varies, application. It varies on the truck. Because on your truck. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Because when you look. Yes, we just have those ones right on the front axle shafts. Okay. And unless, sure. 
And unless you actually got uh, replacement U joints that have Zerks, then uh, you would have those Zerk fittings. But there's unfortunately no other no other fittings that are on these trucks. The days of going to get a grease job and oil change are kind of okay. I mean, obviously that changes unless you're running a well. If you're running a cabin chassis, that changes. Yeah. Might have a couple. Oh, more. hold on. No, you can still grease those. The front end. Mm-hmm. So your major points. I mean, we could just basically say every single steering point. Just look for a grease fitting. And by the way, guys, you want a nice little tip to make sure that thing always takes grease. Get yourself a shop rag, paper towel, Kleenex. I don't care what you use, and wipe that grease fitting off before you plug your hose on there because all just, it takes is like one little bit of sand to get yours. in there yep. just just get on that fitting and wipe it off <laughs> real good and then stick your hose on and if it's not taking grease go get yourself a pocket screwdriver a pick and make sure that thing takes grease because there's no point in just leaving this big old gloopy glob of goo on top of your grease fittings and it never took grease. It doesn't, it doesn't help. Freaking A oh. rights. I think right, now, next week. Do you me recommend 5,000 or 7,000 when my truck tells me it's time to do it? I'm 5,000 all Five. day, baby. Are you? Okay. I'm 5,000 all day, baby. I, that's, that's, that's one of the big heavy hitters, um, uh, with, with that, uh, owner's manual implementation of getting something changed in verbiage is just exactly what you said with, with, uh, do I wait till 7,000 and tell me when the truck tells me to change it? Yeah. Mine's right at seven all the time. I don't think that's correct. Okay. So, A-Rod was verbally upset over I was. the oil life monitor. I was. It's something that I feel is is very important, and if it was to be changed, then we would have more more owners being held responsible for how they're taking care of their vehicle. I mean, I, I can't. You you'd probably agree with me on this too. You can tell, especially when you're doing like an upper oil pan. You can tell if someone changes their oil or not. Oh, most definitely. Most like, definitely. This is going to sound so dumb, but the amount of time it takes the washer solvent in the parts tank, the parts washer tank, to get the goo off the bottom of the pan, I can basically just guess how long your oil change intervals are. Oh, man. Because if it like melts off instantly, I know you're on your stuff. If it takes a few seconds for it to dissolve it, I'm like, this guy's messed up. <laughs> Come on, nah, because you won't find that on mine. I went to Amazon. I bought that little valve. What? I what? took the drain Hold plug on. out, put the valve in, put a hose to it right into a bucket, so there's no more mess or no more splash in the face. He's superimposed. Wait, is it showing just my face? Yeah. Put my arm over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? I just look angry. Oh, that's funny. Oh, guys, I'm over here. <laughs> I gotta t I gotta talk like this now. All right, well we'll end it here. Okay. Uh thanks so like much this. for watching like this. Um thanks so much for joining both Ryan and Jerry. We appreciate you having on. Um uh feel free to tell us in the comment section what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see. If there's anything that uh, you guys want us to talk about, um definitely tell us in the comments. I've been going over some of those uh lately and there's uh definitely some some good ones in there. Uh make sure to reach out to my email right above here in my head. Uh if you're interested in getting on the show, let us know. Uh I will get you in the queue and we'll reach out to your email and then and uh, we'll actually talk on the phone and get you get you up to speed on what we're going to do. So um, uh, thanks so much. And Matt, right, guys, with your technical difficulties, year. there's two yeah, of them. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> what is going on? Uh, that's awesome. Oh, my Lord. All right, guys, uh, be safe. We will be as safe as – dude, I, I'm not okay with this. <laughs>